hey, 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 hey. Mr. Warrior, at your service again. Look at it. Can you believe it? Hey. What else? To our feature animal. It's that guy that came part of the program, that tortoise. Oh, no. Wait, wait. What's this here? What do you got? A tattoo here? I don't think so. It's another tortoise. It's his caricature buddy. Yes, that's right. I rule over you. It is I, Sir Tortoise. And Mr. Wara, uh, are you going to be like doing some kind of funny cartoon thing or are you going to do math? Oh, of course we're here to do Matematica. So let's go ahead and get started. As you can see, we are looking at Lesson 4.2. Hello, 4.2. We're addressing the topic of multiplied decimals and whole numbers. That's one of my favorite topics. And we have an essential question that lets us know how this instruction is going to be guided, our goal. And today, and only today only, on discount, is we are going to come up with a language frame too. So many of my students like to say like, yeah, like, hum, like. Well, you know what? We're going to start speaking in complete sentences, my friends. I know. This is going to be a challenge. But anyways, our essential question states, how can you use a model to multiply a whole number and a decimal? We will be able to answer that question at the end of the video. Okay. Yeah. Woohoo. Yes. Tell me you don't love math the way I love math. Yes. It's time to investigate. Let's investigate. What do we have here? Here's our question. It says, giant tortoises move very slowly. Yeah, I think everybody knew that. They can travel a distance of about ooh, 1,700 mile in one hour. Oh, we say 0.17 mile in one hour. Okay, that's pretty slow. How far could a giant tortoise move if it travels at the same speed for four hours? Okay, now when I'm Thinking out loud here, okay, when I look at this problem and I hear it, there's some really important parts of this problem I want to be able to, like, unpack. First of all, the giant tortoises move very slowly is good to know, but it really doesn't, it's not crucial information, pertinent information, if you will, for our problem. So the fact that they can travel a certain rate per hour is important. The fact that it says here, how far could a giant tortoise okay, move if it travels at the same speed for four hours? That's letting me know that I'm needing to find this amount every hour for four hours. Now, we used to add, right? We could add that and show that, and we could also multiply. Because we know multiplying, like multiplication, is like a really quick way to add numbers together. Well, let's go ahead and complete the statement to describe the problem. It says, I do, I need to find how many total miles uh, are in blank groups of blank. So right here, we know that the total miles are in, we actually have four hours, which is going to be our four groups of, and then we have our number 1700. So that's basically what we're trying to find out here. Okay, now we're coming down. Down, 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 down. So write an expression to represent the problem. Keep in mind that an expression is just simply a way to express a problem. We're not putting in solutions and equal signs and that kind of thing. So we could show that our 4, again, is being multiplied by that amount of 0.17. All right? And we typically put that 0 in there to kind of let us know there's a decimal that's going to follow, right? Not necessary, but we tend to put it in there. Now we're gonna use a decimal model to find the answer. So here it says, what does each small square in the decimal model represent? Well, since we've been starting this uh, new kind of topic with decimals and representing it using these, what we used to call place value blocks. Well, when you were in the primary, we looked at this and this was always seen as 100. And then we talked about tens and ones. But now we're kind of reversing that. We're going to make this thing kind of equal one whole. Okay? So this is just one. This way we can take that same place value block, or if you want to call that decimal model, and we are going to break it up into the, the tenths and the hundredths. We've even done it in the thousands at one point. 
Well, looking at this, it looks like here is I can shade a group of blank squares to represent the distance a giant tortoise can move in one hour. And we already know that he can move at 0.17 per hour. So I'm kind of thinking that what I could do is I could shade how many of these squares to show that. Since I have 1700s, 1700s is much like 17 cents. This could be my one dollar. So I could shade in uh, 17 cents, if you will, or 1700s. I went ahead and showed that amount here. Now that would be in the one hour. And let me write that down in my square. So I'm going to shade in 17 squares to represent that. Now it says in D, it says to use a different color to shade each additional group of blank squares until you have blank groups of blank squares. I love good old go math with all our little blanks that we need to fill in. Well, well, since I have 1700s and that was one hour and we want to figure in two hours, I guess I'll go ahead and use blue to fill in another 17 tenths. Okay, now you can see there's another 17 tenths. I had 10 here and three. Oh, I don't have 17 tenths. I'm sorry. I have 10, 10, uh, 10 hundreds here, one tenth and three hundredths. It's slow down when we talk about decimal sound and we need four more. And there's my four. So now I have another 17. I'm going to cheat here. Woohoo. There. Okay. Until you have, and then we know we're going to have four groups and of, and then we'll find out how many squares we have. We don't know that yet. So I'm going to continue on. Since I have four here, it looks like I'm going to have a six. I need a six slot. And I think I see that here, two, four, six. So I have six. That means I'm going to need 11 more. Let me get another 10. Now I have 16. I'm going to need a one. So now I have another group of 17. Now I need one more for that last hour. There's 10. And oh, maybe I don't need this one here. I need nine. And then it looks like I'm going to need eight. Okay, with two left over, that would make sense. Eight. So now I have nine and eight. That's 17. So I have 17, 17, 17, 17. Well, now how many have been shaded in? Well, we have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. It looks like 68. 68 hundredths. Let's get that information in here. Okay, so have that four groups of 17 squares. Record the total number of squares you shaded, and we shaded 68 of them. So in this case, so the torus could actually move, and then we could put that in there as 0 0.68 mile in four hours. It's not too, not too bad, huh? A half a mile, four hours. Could take them a while, but that's some distance. Now, let's just go ahead and review one of the mathematical practices. This is basically what we were doing here, and it's important that we look at these mathematical practices. Let's bring this guy to the front, and that's looking at it here. To use appropriate, tool, uh, use appropriate tools strategically. Okay. See, I know when I use certain tools to help me explore and deepen my math understanding, and you can see that's really what we did here. We went ahead and we used a decimal model here, which actually helped us get a better understanding of what was happening in the problem. Now, I know some of you may have already in your mind figured out that, oh, I know the algorithm would be 17 hundreds times four. But by using these tools here, it helped us get a deeper understanding of what's happening in the problem. And here, that's what we just basically did to explain how the model helps you determine if your answer is reasonable. And it does seem reasonable when you think of 17. I would choose 15 because 15 times 4 is much like the clock would give me 60. So 15 minutes times 4 quarters, 60 minutes, yeah, 6,800, that makes that very reasonable. And when we do that, that always helps us in math. Okay, hey, let's move on to the next page. Come on. Here we go. Now we draw some conclusions, okay? Get a better understanding here when we talk about that. Now, six, explain why you need, I'm sorry, explain why you used only one decimal model to show the product. Um, some of these questions are kind of strange. Okay, I explain why you used only one decimal model. I don't know, I'm just kind of guessing that we only, our numbers were less than one whole. That's why we only used one decimal model. I think this is what they're referring to. So I said, since the product uh, is 6,800, it's less than one, we only needed to use one whole model. All right, that's what I'm going to write down. And here it says, explain how the product of four groups of 1,700 is similar to the product of four groups of 17. How is it different? Uh, okay. 
Uh, oh, I like this question. It's a good question. Well, if we were to look at both of these, whether it's 1700s or just 17, see both both of the products um, are going to have the the same digits. See, we have the same digits here, but the decimal point will be in a different place because we're multiplying 1700s, and the decimal place is. If you want to think of it, two decimal places to the left here, whereas with 17, okay, the decimal place is actually right where that period is right there. So it moved two powers of 10. So that would be the only thing that was different. So let me go ahead and write that note down. Super. Now, now it says compare the product of 1700s and 4 with each of the factors. And it says, which number has the greatest value? Explain how this is different than multiplying two whole numbers. Okay, well, first of all, um, we know that the 4, right? The 4 has the, the greatest value here out of those two factors. And then it says explain how this is different than multiplying two whole numbers. Well, when you, when you multiply two whole numbers, all right, um, you know, the product has the greatest value. I guess that's what they mean by what we're going to compare. Here, it's not going to have the greatest value. So I guess that's how they're different. You just The numbers are going to be larger. So let me write that down. Okay, so finally, we have make connections. Okay, let's make some connections. It says you can draw a quick picture to solve decimal multiplication problems. Find the product three times... 46 hundreds and it's given us as a step-by-step. -step. This is nice. Nice that you're guiding us through this this process. So this is draw three groups of four tenths and six hundredths. Remember that a square is equal to one. So we're basing it on that one, what we used to call the hundred, right? Like the hundred block or the flat. Sometimes they have different names for it and that was always a hundred. We're calling that just one whole. So I'll go ahead and do that. So here's my three groups of four tenths and here are my six hundredths. This is one way of modeling the problem. Uh, GoMath typically uses this type of modeling. There's all different ways this can be shown. I like a place value chart I've done with uh, Eureka, the Engage New York program as well. They all work. All right. Now it says combine the hundreds and rename. So there are, you can see six times three, there's, there's 18. Uh, hundreds, so we have to rename those. So let's go ahead and rename them. So what I did here is I went ahead and I renamed. So I have four here and six here. Those are ten hundreds, and I'm gonna and I showed one more tenth here, adding that on. Now I have five tenths here, and I have ten less hundreds over here because I went ahead and renamed that. So let's fill that in. It says there are, and we do know there are altogether. There's eighteen hundreds. I will rename. Remember how many hundreds? Ten, okay, ten hundreds as one tenth. And we just did that. That's step two. Cross out the hundreds you renamed. All right, I guess we'll cross those out. Now combine the tenths and rename. Let's do that. Okay, so now I've taken my ten tenths and made one whole. And I need to go ahead and update my step three. So there are, uh, altogether, we had that additional one. So we had four, eight. 12, so we had 13 tenths. I will rename 10 tenths as one. That's one whole or just one one. It means the same thing. So we'll cross out the tenths that we renamed, which is all of these here. Okay, they're in circle. We can see them. And it says record the value shown by your completed quick picture. All right. Well, it's showing me one whole. So that's going to be one. It's showing that I have just looks like one, two, three tenths. So that's going to be three tenths in the tenths place. And then it looks like I have six, seven, eight hundredths. Okay. Now, by renaming these decimals, what does it say here? Explain how renaming decimals is like renaming whole numbers. Very similar, huh? When we regroup and we rename. Now, what I want to do here is the answer seems fairly reasonable, but I want to go ahead and do the algorithm as well. All right. Little addition here, because it's an important skill that we need to have as well. Now, I would typically... With, with, when we're multiplying decimals, we don't line up the decimals like we did uh, when adding and subtracting them. Well, that's really important. Okay, we line up the digits, so it really doesn't matter. So I'll, if I were to put my point 
0.46 or 0 0.46, I'm going to line up my digits. I'm not concerned where the decimal is. The decimal here for the 3 is actually way over here. Okay, but I want to line up my digits. So I have 18. I carry my 1. Remember, I'm going to add that 1 because I'm moving into the tenths column here. 3 times 4 is 12, plus 1 is 13. 138 sounds great, but remember we talked about that. The digits are the same had these been a whole numbers, decimals doesn't matter. These digits are the same, but the decimal place has decimal place has moved. So since we have two powers of 10 here, okay, and then as actually, in this sense, we're taking the decimal out two places out of this number, we're going to put it back in the opposite way because it's like we're multiplying 100 here times 10 times 10. So we just multiplied 0.46 by 100, giving us the number 46, but now we need to put it back in, divide by 100, and then it puts that decimal place right there. And of course, it matches up. Isn't that wonderful? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, calm down, Mr. War. Calm, hum, do your yoga. Okay, and now last but not least, we want to be able to say, yes, we did it. Mr. Tortoise, but we're going to take a look at that essential question now. It said, how can you use a model to multiply a whole number and a decimal? So here's that language objective that I referred to, to avoid that, um, like, that kind of thing. We can use this. It's just the way you use a model to multiply a whole number and a decimal is. And this is kind of sets up us up for what we call a language frame to we can explain our mathematical reasoning. So now we can respond to the language objective. We had this blank where we could fill in our understanding using a language frame. So the way that the way I could use a model to multiply a whole number to decimal is by modeling the decimal factor, right? And then repeating that model by the same number of times as the whole number factor, which is what we did, if you recall, when we were using those tools strategically it says I can find the product by renaming that's what we did at the end if necessary in counting the number of each place value they have uh, that I have but in this case this is an example when we start using these words in our math it's going to make a big difference in how we're able to understand it and this makes maybe challenging but this is where we need to get to because the better we can express our understanding okay my friends this was like this wonderful lesson 4.2 yet you have to love it now you know we always come to the end of the video and i always say those famous what are they four words i think they're four words live long and prosper